system in return for its support. According to Western intelligence sources, the Syrian regime is using cargo planes to send the Iranians Russian-made systems, which Russia refuses to sell to the Iranians. Of course, Iran has reportedly been supplying Syria with fighters and military training for its civil war. Now some analysts say this could change any potential plans to strike Iran's nuclear facilities. Hmm. Former uh, intelligence officer Mike Barrett joins us. He's currently the CEO of security consulting firm Diligent Innovations. Hey, Mike, this could change the Israelis' plans? Well, it could actually have a dramatic impact because the SA-300 is a fairly advanced system. Uh, really what, what you're getting is upgraded radars, and you're also having an ability to take down uh, the kinds of missiles that you shoot in first. One of the major tactics you do when you're uh, you know, attacking using aircraft is you want to send in harm uh, anti-radiation missiles to take out the radar sites. But obviously if, uh, if Iran ends up with a significant higher number of, uh, of missile sites, then that changes the equation. And uh, it also puts a certain amount of uncertainty. These are truck-mounted missiles, so you can move them around pretty easily. And uh, it creates a lot of unknowns, which makes you have to really rethink the attack plan if you're uh, coming at it from the Israeli point of view. Then wouldn't the rest of the world try to stop this exchange from happening? Well, we did that, actually. Uh, you mentioned earlier that the Russians had not sold them to the Iranians. They actually, apparently, back in 2009, had agreed to sell them. And then there was tremendous pressure put on by the U.S. and Israel and uh, some of the other world powers to prevent that sale. And that sort of gives you a good indication of just how advanced these missiles are. I mean, it is a bit of a game changer. Uh, one of the challenges with military is that technology tends to come in leaps and bounds. It's not really a steady progression. So as we see these systems get more and more deployed, more and more used, uh, and obviously the, uh, the Russians will get, you know, somebody's getting money for these, and so they'll go back and do more research and create that next generation of missiles. Yeah. It just shows how much the technology is changing on us. Yeah, you've said that there are a series of developments that show the two major flaws in the current planning here. Yeah, that's right. I mean, one of the things is that clearly, you know, I've said several times uh, in discussions with you, I think when you come to a situation like Syria, either you go all in and you say the Assad regime's got to go and you make that happen or you stay out of it. Now, I'm in the camp that as a realist says we should stay out of it. What we've instead decided to do is to be sort of half in. Wait hmm. until a certain number of, uh, you know, of citizens die in Syria. Wait until a certain amount of chemical or other weapons start to proliferate. Wait until these other geostrategic cracks start to happen so you start seeing Russia and Iran te tag teaming and being drawn closer by, you know, sort of what they view as their common policy enemy, the United States. So I think that's a real failure there. The other one is, as I was sort of alluding to earlier, that the technology is going to continue to grow. And so, you know, when it's uh, the small weapons, that's bad enough. But when you start talking about SA-300s, I mean, this is a pretty significant weapon system. As I, as I said earlier, you know, NATO and the U.S. were pretty aggressive about making sure they did not get deployed earlier so that we wouldn't end up in this situation. So you wonder if that speeds up whatever Israel was going to do or if Israel scuttles whatever it was going to do? Well, I, I don't think Israel's going to scuttle. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, again, you can look at these situations from a lot of perspectives, but from the Israeli point of view, it's an existential threat. Uh, it's not particularly likely necessarily that Iran would ever use this against Israel, but the reality is they could. And so if they could use nuclear weapons, then that's a serious problem. I'll say Mike Barrett live in Washington. Mike, good to see you. Thank you.